the Moroccan coast was a silhouette against the pre-dawn light, a shadowy frontier between the vast, unyielding desert and the boundless, whispering sea. Amin al-Rashid stood at the helm of the Sahara's wind, his gaze fixed on the horizon, where the first hint of sunlight began to paint the sky in hues of gold and crimson. The air was thick with anticipation, the silence of the early morning broken only by the gentle lapping of waves against the ship's sturdy hull and the occasional creak of wood underfoot. Beside him, his crew moved like shadows, each man and woman well-versed in the art of silence and stealth that their trade demanded. They were not merely pirates. They were hunters of the sea, guided by the stars, and a shared desire for freedom that no empire could quell. Ahead, the unsuspecting merchant ship emerged from the night, its sails billowing gently in the breeze, unaware of the danger that lurked in the pre-dawn gloom. It was a Spanish galleon, heavy with the promise of gold, spices, and silks, treasures that called to Amin and his crew with the siren song of adventure and prosperity. Amin turned to his crew, his voice a low whisper. Prepare to board. Remember, we are shadows on the water, unseen, unheard until the moment of strike. Like wraiths, they donned their sashes and armed themselves, each weapon gleaming dully in the half-light. Layla, the navigator, moved to Amun's side, her eyes alight with the thrill of the hunt. Though new to the Sahara's wind, she had quickly proven herself invaluable, her skill at navigation matched only by her courage. As the pirate ship drew closer, hidden by the low light and their silent approach, Amin reflected on the path that had led him here. The sea was his home, and his crew, his family. Together, they sought not just wealth, but the freedom that came with it. The freedom to live by their own code, beyond the reach of empires and kings. With a signal from Amun, the pirates sprang into action. launching grappling hooks and drawing their swords. The Sahara's wind collided with the merchant ship, the sound of splintering wood and shouts of alarm cutting through the morning air. The battle was swift, the element of surprise in their favor. Amen led the charge, his sword a flash of silver in the burgeoning light. Layla fought beside him, her own blade dancing deadly patterns through the air. In mere minutes, the merchant crew was subdued, their riches forfeited to the Moroccan pirates. As the sun rose fully above the horizon, casting its warm glow over the victorious Sahara's wind, Amin stood once more at the helm, his eyes on the endless horizon. This was but one chapter in their ongoing saga testament to their cunning, bravery, and unyielding thirst for adventure. The sea whispered promises of untold treasures and unseen lands, and Amin al-Rashid, pirate captain of the Moroccan coast, was ready to claim them all. In the days following the successful plunder, as the Sahara's wind cut through the azure waves under a clear blue sky, the crew's spirits were high. Laughter and the sound of traditional Moroccan music filled the air, a stark contrast to the tension that had preceded their latest conquest. Amidst the celebration, Layla stood at the bow, her eyes lost in the horizon, her mind adrift in memories of a life that now seemed worlds away. Layla had not always been a navigator of the high seas. Born in a small coastal village to a family of fishermen, she had grown up with the ocean as her backyard. 
unlike other children who found contentment on solid ground. Layla was drawn to the mysteries of the deep, spending hours studying the stars and dreaming of distant lands beyond the grasp of her humble beginnings. Her thirst for adventure was matched only by her intellect. By the time she was a teenager, Layla had taught herself navigation, using the stars as her guide, much to the amazement of her family and fellow villagers. However, with her talents came a restlessness, a longing for something more than the life her village could offer. Her opportunity came in an unexpected form. Amin al-Rashid and his crew had anchored near her village, seeking supplies and information on Spanish movements along the coast. It was Layla who approached them, offering her knowledge in exchange for passage on their ship. Skeptical at first, Amin had challenged her to prove her worth by navigating them through a treacherous reef that had claimed many ships. Layla accepted without hesitation. Under her guidance, the Sahara's wind sailed through the reef unscathed, her skill earning her a place among the crew and Amin's respect. For Layla, the Sahara's wind was not just a pirate ship. It was the key to the world she had always dreamed of exploring. As the celebration continued around her, Layla felt a sense of belonging she had never known before. These pirates, with their unwavering loyalty and thirst for freedom, had become her family. Together, they sailed the boundless ocean, a testament to the power of dreams and the unbreakable bonds forged in the heart of adventure. Yet, even as she embraced her new life, Layla was unaware of the eyes watching her from afar. Hamid, the Spanish naval commander, had begun to piece together the identity of the elusive navigator who had outwitted him at every turn. His obsession with capturing the Sahara's wind and its crew would soon lead him directly to Layla, setting the stage for a confrontation that would test the bonds of her newfound family and the strength of her own spirit. In the opulent quarters of his flagship, anchored in the port of Cadiz, Commander Hamid stood over a table strewn with maps and reports. His eyes, dark and calculating, scanned the documents with an intensity that belied his calm demeanor. The room was silent, save for the gentle crackle of the oil lamp that cast flickering shadows across the walls. Hamid was not a man to underestimate his adversaries. His rise through the ranks of the Spanish Navy was a testament to his strategic mind and ruthlessness in battle. Yet, the Moroccan pirates, led by the elusive Amin al-Rashid had become a thorn in his side, a challenge to his authority that he could not ignore. Among the scattered reports, one name stood out, repeated in the accounts of escaped merchants and captured pirates alike. Layla, the navigator, whose skill had allowed the Sahara's wind to evade capture time and again. Hamid's interest in her was more than professional. He saw in Layla the key to finally capturing Amin al-Rashid and crushing the pirate threat once and for all. With a decisive motion, Hamid gathered the reports, his plan taking shape. He would set a trap for the Sahara's wind, using a decoy merchant ship laden with treasure as bait. But the real prize would not be the ship's cargo. It would be the navigator whose talents had kept the pirates always one step ahead. Prepare the fleet, Hamid commanded, his voice carrying the weight of his resolve. We sail at dawn. The Sahara's wind will be ours, and with it, the end of piracy in these waters. 
As his officers scrambled to carry out his orders, Hamid turned once more to the maps, his finger tracing the likely route of the pirate ship. In his mind, he could already see the battle unfolding. The Sahara's wind cornered and outgunned, its crew at his mercy. But even as he plotted their downfall, Hamid could not shake a grudging respect for Layla and her crew. They were worthy adversaries, and their capture would be a victory worthy of his legacy. Unbeknownst to Hamid, his actions would set in motion a series of events that would test not only the resolve of the Sahara's wind and its crew, but also the very foundations of his beliefs. The open sea was a realm of endless possibilities where alliances were fluid and the line between friend and foe was often blurred. In his pursuit of victory, Hamid would find himself facing not just the pirates he sought to destroy, but also the echoes of his past and the question of what it truly meant to be free. The Sahara's wind cut through the waves, its sails full and proud against the backdrop of a setting sun. Inside the captain's quarters, Amin al-Rashid and his crew gathered around a worn table, maps and charts spread out before them. The air was thick with tension, a stark contrast to the usual camaraderie that defined their gatherings. Layla stood beside Amin, her expression serious as she recounted the rumors picked up in their last port of call. Merchants whisper of a treasure-laden ship set to sail from Cadiz, but the details are too convenient, too enticing. It reeks of a trap. Amin nodded, his eyes reflecting the flickering candlelight. Amin's work, no doubt. He grows desperate to catch us, to make an example of us before the crown. The crew murmured in agreement. The threat of Hamid's fleet, a shadow that had loomed over them for months. But where there was risk, there was also opportunity, a principle that had guided their voyages and their victories. We will not avoid the trap, Amin declared, his voice steady. We will spring it on our terms. Layla, can you navigate us through the Isla de Leon at night? Layla's eyes sparkled with the challenge. The currents are treacherous and the rocks unforgiving, but yes, I can navigate us through. A grin spread across Amin's face. Then that is where we will lead Hamid. His ships are too large, too cumbersome for such waters. We will divide his fleet, isolate his flagship, and strike where he least expects it. The crew leaned in their earlier apprehension giving way to a familiar thrill. Here was a plan that played to their strengths, their agility, their audacity, and their unbreakable bond. And what of the merchants caught in the middle? Innocence should not suffer for our battle. Amin met her gaze, the weight of leadership heavy on his shoulders. We will send warnings discreetly. No harm will come to those not seeking it. Our quarrel is with Hamid alone. As the meeting adjourned, the crew set to work with renewed purpose. The Sahara's wind would not sail into Hamid's trap as prey, but as a predator, cunning and lethal. The night of the confrontation, Layla guided the ship through the Isla de Leon with a precision that left no room for doubt or fear. Amin and his crew readied themselves, not just for battle, but for a gambit that would define their legacy in the annals of the sea. Hamid, confident in his trap, sailed into the night, unaware that the hunters he sought to ensnare had laid a trap of their own. The sea, ever the domain of fate and fortune, awaited the unfolding of their duel, a testament to the indomitable will of those who dared to call it home. As the first signs of Hamid's fleet appeared on the horizon, the Sahara's wind slipped into the shadows between the waves, ready to turn the tide of their destiny. 
Under the cloak of night, the Sahara's wind maneuvered through the narrow passages of Isla de Leon, its sails barely whispering against the wind. Layla, her eyes fixed on the treacherous waters ahead, guided the ship with unwavering precision, her commands soft yet firm. The crew moved in silent harmony, each member attuned to the rhythms of the sea and the ship that carried them towards destiny. Behind them, the dark silhouettes of Hamid's fleet loomed, their lanterns flickering like the eyes of predators in the darkness. But in these waters, the predator was at a disadvantage. Its size and strength rendered null by the labyrinth of rocks and currents that Layla navigated with ease. As the gap between the Sahara's wind and its pursuers widened, Amun prepared his crew for the inevitable confrontation. Ready the cannons, but hold your fire until my command. Tonight, we outwit our hunter, he whispered, his gaze never leaving the approaching fleet. The moment Hamid's flagship entered the Narrows, it became clear that he had underestimated the pirate's knowledge of these waters. The Spanish ship struggled to maneuver, its bulk a hindrance rather than an advantage. It was then that Amun gave the signal, a simple wave of his hand that unleashed the fury of the Sahara's wind. Cannon fire tore through the night, the sound thunderous against the silence of the sea. The Spanish flagship, caught off guard, scrambled to respond. But the narrow passage offered no room for evasion. The Sahara's wind, agile and swift, darted through the waters, its cannons firing with deadly accuracy. The battle was not one-sided. Hamid's crew fought back with valor, their cannons answering in kind. But in the treacherous waters of Isla de Leon, skill and knowledge of the sea outweighed sheer firepower. Layla's navigation and Amin's strategic mind turned the tide, isolating the flagship from its escorts, which floundered in the perilous currents. As dawn broke, the Sahara's wind emerged from the narrows, battered but triumphant. Behind them, Hamid's flagship was grounded on the rocks, its hull breached and taking on water. The rest of his fleet, unable to navigate the passage, had been forced to turn back, their pursuit thwarted. Amin stood at the helm, his eyes on the horizon as the first light of day washed over his crew. They had faced the might of the Spanish Navy and prevailed not through brute force, but through cunning and unity. Layla joined him, her eyes reflecting the light of the new dawn. Together, they had outmaneuvered one of their most formidable foes, securing not just their freedom, but the legend of the Sahara's wind as a ship that could not be caught, a crew that could not be conquered. In the aftermath of the battle, as the crew tended to their wounds and repaired their ship. There was a sense of accomplishment that went beyond the spoils of war. They had proven to themselves and to the world that the spirit of adventure, the bond of camaraderie, and the quest for freedom were forces no empire could quell. The Sahara's wind sailed on, its sails catching the wind, its crew ready for whatever adventures lay ahead. Their legacy written not just in the treasures they sought, but in the tales of bravery, ingenuity, and unyielding spirit that would be told wherever the wind carried them. As the Sahara's wind sailed away from the Isles of Isla de Leon, 
its hull patched and cannons reloaded. The crew set about their tasks with a sense of renewed purpose. The victory over Hamid had not only secured their freedom, but had also solidified their reputation as the most cunning pirates of the Atlantic. Yet, for Amin al-Rashid and Layla, the horizon held more than just the promise of safety. It beckoned with the allure of uncharted adventures. In the quiet of the captain's quarters, maps and charts spread across the table. Amin and Layla pored over the possibilities that lay before them. The air was filled with the scent of salt and the distant sound of sea shanties as the crew celebrated above deck. We've outmaneuvered Hamid, but there will be others. Amin mused, his finger tracing a route on the map. The sea is vast and its secrets many. Our next quest must be one that not only brings us wealth, but also ensures the safety of our crew. Layla nodded, her eyes scanning the charts. There are rumors of a hidden cove along the coast of Madagascar, untouched by empire or navy. They say it's guarded by the sea itself, accessible only to those who know its secrets. Amin's eyes lit up with interest. A safe haven for pirates, protected by the lore of the sea. If we could find it, we could secure a refuge for ourselves and our allies. But the journey is fraught with peril, Layla cautioned. Storms, currents, and creatures of the deep guard the way. And there are other dangers, too. Rival pirates who seek the cove for their own. Amin leaned back, a thoughtful expression on his face. Every legend has its grain of truth. Our victory over Hamid has shown that we are more than mere pirates. We are seekers of the unknown, challengers of the impossible. Layla met his gaze, a spark of adventure in her eyes. Then let us chase this legend, Amin. Let us find this cove and make it our own. Not just as a haven, but as a symbol of our freedom, a testament to our courage. The decision made, they began to plan in earnest, their voices low and excited. The quest for the hidden cove would be their greatest yet, a journey into the heart of the unknown, where the bonds of their crew would be tested against the mysteries of the sea. As they worked into the night, the Sahara's wind sailed on, guided by the stars and the unbreakable will of its captain and navigator. Ahead lay challenges and dangers, but also the promise of discovery and the enduring pursuit of freedom. In the days to come, their journey would take them to the edges of the map, where legend and reality blurred into one. Together, Amun and Layla would face the trials of the sea, their destiny intertwined with the fate of the Sahara's wind. A ship that had become a legend in its own right. A beacon of hope and adventure in the boundless ocean. And so, with the wind at their backs and the horizon calling, they sailed forth into legend. Their hearts as boundless as the sea itself. Their spirits as free as the wind. As the Sahara's wind made its way towards the mysterious waters of Madagascar, the crew encountered a merchant vessel in distress. Its sails were torn, and it listed heavily in the water, a victim of the treacherous currents that plagued the route. Amun, ever the strategist and opportunist, ordered his crew to aid the vessel, sensing an opportunity for both plunder and potentially valuable information. Among the grateful crew of the merchant ship, one figure stood out. A young woman named Isra, whose knowledge of the sea and its secrets belied her humble appearance. With her ship beyond repair, she requested passage with the pirates, offering in exchange her unique skills and a peculiar map that had been in her family for generations. This map, she claimed, held the key to navigating the perilous waters 
that guarded the entrance to the hidden cove. It was inscribed with symbols and markers that no ordinary sailor could decipher, a legacy of the ancient mariners who first charted these waters. Skeptical but intrigued, Amin welcomed Isra aboard the Sahara's wind. Layla, ever the navigator, was initially wary of the newcomer and her claims. Yet, as they pored over the map together, Layla's skepticism turned to fascination. Isra's knowledge complemented her own, and the symbols on the map began to reveal their secrets under their combined scrutiny. Isra's story unfolded as the ship sailed on. She had been raised on tales of the sea, her lineage tracing back to a navigator of legendary skill who had once found the cove but vowed to keep its location a secret. The map had been passed down through generations, a treasure more valuable than gold. Yet Isra had always felt it was her destiny to share its secrets with those who truly understood the value of freedom. As the crew adjusted to Isra's presence, her insights into the sea's moods and her ability to predict the weather endeared her to them. Her stories of ancient mariners and hidden treasures filled the evenings with wonder and anticipation. Together, Amin, Layla, and Isra plotted their course, deciphering the map's clues and navigating challenges that tested their resolve and their skills. Storms raged around them, and mysterious currents sought to lead them astray. But under their combined guidance, the Sahara's wind pressed on, its crew united in their quest for the hidden cove. The journey was not without its dangers. Other pirates, drawn by tales of the hidden cove and the legendary Sahara's wind, sought to claim the prize for themselves. But Amun and his crew were undeterred their resolve strengthened by the bonds of friendship and the promise of discovery. As the Sahara's wind sailed closer to its destination, the air buzzed with anticipation. The hidden cove, with all its promises of safety and freedom, was within their grasp. But as they would soon discover, the final leg of their journey would hold challenges greater than any they had faced before testing not just their skills and courage, but the very bonds that held them together. The Sahara's wind, with Isra's map as their guide, approached the waters off the coast of Madagascar, where the sea whispered secrets lost to time. The sky was a canvas painted with the fiery hues of dawn, the ocean beneath a mirror to the awakening world. Yet beneath its serene surface, the sea hid dangers that had kept the hidden cove veiled from unworthy eyes. Isra stood beside Layla at the helm, her eyes scanning the horizon, her fingers tracing the lines of the map that lay open before them. The cove is protected by the Trident's trial she explained, her voice steady, despite the undercurrent of excitement. Three challenges that test the heart, the mind, and the spirit. Only those who prove themselves worthy can find the passage through. Amin, ever vigilant, listened intently, his gaze fixed on the crew. We have faced many trials together, he said, his voice carrying over the deck. This will be no different. We stand united as always. The first challenge came in the form of a tempest that rose without warning. A wall of dark clouds that threatened to swallow the sky. The crew rallied, their years of facing the sea's wrath evident in their swift preparations. Under Layla's and Isra's command, the Sahara's wind danced with the wind and the waves, her sails billowing defiance against the storm's might.
tempest finally abated. The ship emerged, battered but unbroken. Her crew's spirits bolstered by their triumph. The second challenge was a labyrinth of currents and whirlpools, hidden beneath the calm surface of the waters near the cove's supposed location. Here, Isra's knowledge shone brightest. Her understanding of the sea's moods guiding the ship through the treacherous waters, with a precision that left even Layla in awe. The crew's trust in their new navigator grew with each successful maneuver, their journey a testament to the power of unity and shared purpose. The final challenge was not of the sea, but of the soul. A dense fog descended upon them, obscuring vision and dampening sound, the world reduced to a whisper of mist. Voices, ethereal and haunting, filled the air, whispering doubts and fears, tempting each member of the crew to turn away from their quest. It was here that Amun's leadership shone, his unwavering resolve a beacon that guided them through the darkness. Together, they stood firm against the tide of despair, their faith in each other, their strongest shield. When the fog lifted, the Sahara's wind found herself at the mouth of a hidden passage. The waters calm and inviting, a stark contrast to the trials they had faced. Isra's map had led them true, but it was their courage, their unwavering spirit, that had truly navigated the final leg of their journey. As they sailed through the passage, the hidden cove revealed itself, a haven untouched by time, its waters clear and tranquil, surrounded by lush greenery that whispered tales of a world forgotten. The crew of the Sahara's wind stepped ashore, their hearts full, their spirits lifted by the knowledge that they had faced the Trident's trial and emerged victorious. The cove was more than a refuge. It was a symbol of their journey, of the trials they had overcome together. Here, in this secluded paradise, they found not just safety, but a deeper understanding of the bonds that united them the true treasure of their quest. <laughs> and so, as the Sahara's wind lay anchored in the calm waters of the cove, her crew gathered on the shore, their faces alight with the joy of discovery and the satisfaction of a challenge met and mastered. They had found their haven, but more importantly, they had found it together. Their legacy forever intertwined with the legend of the Hidden Cove. With the Hidden Cove now a part of their legacy, Amin, Layla, Isra, and the crew of the Sahara's Wind set about transforming this secluded paradise into a haven not just for themselves, but for all who shared their spirit of freedom and adventure. The Cove, with its natural defenses and abundance of resources, was the perfect stronghold from which to defy the empires that sought to control the seas. Under Amun's leadership, the crew began the work of fortification, enhancing the cove's natural defenses with watchtowers and hidden outposts. They charted the waters around the cove, marking safe passages through the reefs and establishing signals for friendly ships seeking refuge. Layla and Isra with their deep knowledge of navigation and the sea's mysteries, crafted charts of the surrounding waters, 
making the cove a beacon for those who navigated by the stars. They sent word to allies and other free spirits across the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean, inviting them to join in the creation of a new kind of community, one built on mutual respect and shared purpose. The cove quickly became a hub of pirate activity, a place where ships could be repaired and resupplied, where crews could rest and plan their next voyages. But more than that, it became a melting pot of cultures and ideas, where tales of the sea were shared around bonfires, where the music of distant lands filled the air, and where the bonds of camaraderie were forged in the shared pursuit of freedom. As the reputation of the cove grew, so too did its legend. Stories of the hidden paradise, protected by the sea itself and by the cunning of its pirate founders, spread far and wide. The cove was no longer just a place on a map. It was a symbol of defiance, a testament to the indomitable will of those who called the sea their home. But with fame came attention, not all of it welcome. The empires of the world, ever eager to stamp out the threat of piracy, turned their eyes towards the cove. Yet, those who sought to conquer it found only frustration. The cove's defenses, both natural and man-made, repelled all who dared to challenge its freedom. In time, the cove became more than just a haven for pirates. It became a sanctuary for the oppressed and the adventurous, for anyone who sought a life unbound by the chains of society. Merchants, explorers, and renegades from across the world were drawn to the cove, each adding to its legend, its wealth, and its diversity. Through it all, Amun, Layla, and Isra remained at the heart of the cove's community. They were not just leaders, but guardians of a dream, stewards of a place that stood as a beacon of hope in a world fraught with tyranny and oppression. The hidden cove, once a secret whispered among the waves, had become a legend, a paradise found in the vastness of the sea. It was a place where the legacy of the sea's ancient mariners was reborn where the spirit of adventure thrived, and where the freedom of the open sea was a reality for all who dared to embrace it. And as the sun set on the cove, casting its golden light over a community united in purpose and spirit, the Sahara's wind stood ready at anchor, a symbol of the endless possibilities that lay beyond the horizon, a reminder that the greatest treasures were not those hoarded in chests, but those found in the hearts of the brave. As the Sahara's wind prepared to embark on a new voyage, the peace of the hidden cove was shattered by the return of an old adversary. Word reached Amin and his crew that Hamid, the Spanish naval commander they had outwitted, had not forgotten his defeat. Driven by a desire for vengeance and the restoration of his tarnished reputation, Hamid had spent months gathering intelligence and building a fleet specifically designed to navigate the treacherous waters surrounding the cove. Under the cover of night, Hamid's fleet approached their sails like dark specters on the horizon. The cove's lookouts raised the alarm and the community sprang into action, their celebration turning to preparation for the defense of their sanctuary. Amin, Layla, Isra, and the crew of the Sahara's Wind rallied the inhabitants of the cove, their unity and resolve stronger than ever. The defenses they had built the watchtowers and hidden cannons were manned by pirates and sailors ready to defend their haven. As dawn broke, 
Hamid's fleet emerged from the mist, a formidable force that dwarfed the defenders in number and firepower. Yet, what they lacked in size, the defenders made up for in spirit, and the knowledge that they fought for their freedom, their home. The battle that ensued was fierce. The air filled with the roar of cannons, and the clash of swords. Hamid, leading the charge, was a figure of wrath, his eyes fixed on the Sahara's wind, the symbol of his obsession. Amin and Layla, aboard the Sahara's wind, led a sortie that cut through Hamid's line, their crew fighting with the desperation of those with everything to lose. Isra, from her position on the shore, coordinated the defense. Her knowledge of the cove's waters, allowing her to direct the defenders to exploit their advantages. The turning point came when Hamid, in his eagerness to capture Amin, overextended his flagship into the cove's treacherous waters. Amin, recognizing the opportunity, led a daring maneuver that trapped Hamid's ship between the Sahara's wind and the shore batteries. Entanglement of the two ships set the stage for a ferocious skirmish, mirroring the Tempest's fury. Amidst this vortex of violence, Hamid and Amin emerged as the eye of the storm, their imminent clash pausing the surrounding chaos in breathless anticipation. The air crackled with the energy of their impending duel, charged with the force of their convictions and the destiny that drew their paths together. Hamid. Your deftness in battle is matched only by the futility of your cause, Amin. Cease this folly now and spare those who follow you into the abyss. Amin. Cease against tyranny. Our fight for liberty knows no surrender. We are the tempest that will sweep away the likes of you. Their blades danced in the tempest, igniting sparks that rivaled the lightning above. The din of battle faded into a distant echo, their personal vendetta taking center stage in this tumultuous arena. Hamid. A murderer's freedom, soaked in the blood of the innocent. Is this the legacy you seek? Amin. A tyrant's order, crushing the soul of freedom. We choose death over such bondage. The battle's crescendo saw them trading blows with ferocious intent, their fate hanging in the balance with each strike. A sudden heave of the ship offered Amin his moment, a gap in Hamid's defense. In that critical juncture, Amin's blade sang through the storm, claiming victory over Hamid. heavens wept, as if mourning the fall of a warrior, the rain washing away the remnants of their ideological battle. Amin. This victory transcends me, Hamid. It is the dawn of unfettered freedom. In the end, it was Hamid who fell, bested by the pirate he
he had sought to destroy. With their leader defeated, the resolve of Hamid's fleet crumbled, and they withdrew, leaving the cove in peace once more. The victory was not without cost. The cove had been defended, but the battle had taken its toll on its defenders and their sanctuary. Yet, in the aftermath, as the community came together to repair and rebuild, there was a sense of unity stronger than before. The defense of the cove had proven that their haven was more than just a place. It was a symbol of their shared values, their resilience, and their determination to live free. Hamid's defeat marked the end of an era. The cove was no longer just a hidden sanctuary. It was a beacon of hope, a testament to the power of unity in the face of tyranny. The legend of the cove and the Sahara's wind would spread far and wide, inspiring all who heard it to dream of freedom and adventure. As the Sahara's wind set sail once again, her crew looking to the horizon with renewed purpose, they knew that their adventures were far from over. The sea was vast, its mysteries endless, but whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together, their spirits unbroken, their resolve unwavering. The cove, their haven, stood behind them, a reminder of what they had fought for and what they had achieved. It was a promise of safe return, of reunions to come, and the enduring belief that, on the open sea, freedom was the greatest treasure of all. <laughs>